something that stops people from really finding interesting new angles and creating interesting new businesses is that they aren't prepared to back themselves. They aren't prepared to actually just do something just because they reckon it would be a good idea. But you look at like, you know, any of the sort of great founders um, of history and all your usual case studies and you read the books about Steve Jobs or Elon Musk or whoever it might be, the thing that comes through loud and clear from all of these things is that the decisions that they made that had a big impact were just them doing what they bloody well felt like. And there was no giant team of analysts backing them up or feeding them information, you know? So you've got to think that if a multi-billion dollar company is actually being run on effectively the whims of what one person just kind of feels like on that day, your little company, well, why can't you do the same, you know? Is there a bit of a survivorship bias with that though? I, 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 yeah. I, 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 I'm just like, <laughs> I, I, I'm with you on this. Like I'm like, yeah. I'm 1000% singing from the same hymn sheet, but it's just, um, you know, you hear those, the, the romantic stories of Steve, yes. Steve Jobs, you hear the Elon Musk, but every, a lot of Tom, Dick and Janes or whatever you want to call them, um, may, do whatever the fuck they felt like, but it may be a really shit idea and may not get going. Do you, do you, do you see where I'm coming the, the, from? The, the, there is 100% like how do you survivorship sorry. bias. Yeah. Um, and also, event ultimately a lot of ideas don't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what I'm trying to get to, mate, is so I, 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 it's doing, I love what you said of founders just doing whatever the fuck they felt like. Yes. But then how are some of the ways they can like, without going in down the data, because I'm so anti-data that I would try and question, could I be wrong here, is what I'm trying to get to, is what are some ways to test, like this is actually, yeah. do you yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah, so um, so I should point out that when I say they do what they felt like, it's not like there was no rhyme or reason behind it. There's always a good reason, a good argument. Again, just to use those examples, the Steve Jobs and Elon Musk uh, examples, when you look at their the thinking behind their fundamental strategies that they did in their business. Um, it's, it's super sound. It's so sound that if they explained it to you before they, now it's all hindsight 2020, and of course it seems like a good idea. But actually, even if you look at the way that they were just explaining it before it was a good idea, even then it was incredibly sound. There's a, a blog post, which I strongly recommend people check out which is, is one that Elon Musk wrote in 2006 about Tesla. It's called, what's it called? Um, if you just Google Tesla master plan, you'll find it because um, it's, it's, uh, it's called Tesla's secret master plan brackets just between you and me. And it was a blog post where he laid out the strategy of Tesla. And it's exactly how it came to transpire, basically. But the point here is, is that you read it and the thinking is just bloody sound. And if you'd read that at the time, and not, not that many people did read it at the time before Tesla was even, you know, a, 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 a famous name before the first car had ever been launched, you could see, yeah, actually, yeah, I get it. This is clever. This makes sense. So one way that to your answer to your question, how can you, how can you test is that whatever your, um, idea is, you need to be able to make the case for it. You need to be able to argue it in a way to a random person, your mum, person on the street, you should, you should quite literally be able to sit them down and say, listen, here's what I'm thinking. Here's the way that other people are doing this. Here's why I think there's actually a, a better way or a, or a more interesting way of doing it, which is such and such. What do you think? And that person, whoever they are, should be able to come back to you and say, huh, wow, yeah, I never thought about it that way. That's, yeah, that's actually, that's actually good. You know, I, I, I like that. That is the standard that you're trying to get over. So all these people out there, to your point about survivorship bias, all the people out there with like big random ideas that failed, very, very few of them will be people who could actually make a compelling defense of those ideas um, if they were sitting in front of someone. So you and I, we've met a lot of founders and we've talked to a lot of people, you know, in this sort of industry. Now, in my experience, number one, 
95% of them, they have not actually made a big decision. So you talk about the survivorship bias and, and, and actually one of my counters to that is to say that most founders out there, failed ones and whatever, that they haven't made an interesting decision in their business. They've actually just launching fundamentally a pretty generic, uninteresting business. So it's not like we got all these, all these failed ideas out there. What we actually have is an absence of ideas. Interesting. But, but yeah. then when we have the ones who actually do have an idea, the ones then within that 5%, the majority of them have an idea that isn't really that defensible. Like if they sat you down and they gave you the pitch, you would be like, yeah, I kind of, kind of see what you're saying. I guess that's sort of interesting, but ultimately you wouldn't be impressed with the idea um, or you wouldn't think that the logic completely hung together. The ones, when you boil it down to someone with an idea and it's an idea that can be defended, that's very unusual. And so actually, I don't think there is much survivorship bias in that group. I actually think that those ones are often the, oftentimes the ones who have got, relatively speaking, a high likelihood of success. And how do you, I don't know what the word is, either coach or nurse your the founders you work with or the businesses you work with or CEOs you work with into, because we've talked a lot about surface level and um, foundational deep level or, or conscious and subconscious. Um, and I think, as we said, USPs are kind of top level, surface surface level. Um, USD is like point of disagreement is much deeper. <laughs> I think what the same thing's happening in decision making is you can think people can think, oh, our ATL campaign we used a fucking jam donut. I'm just pulling things out my ass here, right? Um, which was like super. That was one of the hardest decisions I ever made as a founder. I don't know why I'm speaking that voice, but like, <laughs> but like, <laughs> actually, as you say, what you said is no one's actually made a hard decision. So when we go deeper down into this subconscious of like, this is actually a really hard decision. So I think people can blind themselves from making actually courageous decisions by almost saying, okay, the hardest decision I've made is when I did this talk or something like, you know what I mean? Is we can find ways. How do you, as a kind of strategist coach, get deeper into that? realm of kind of this is where the fucking hard decisions are making how do you actually help them have the courage to one recognize that this is the big decision to be made um and two to actually make that decision i think just on this tim ferris thing says the thing you must do the most is the thing you fear the most which i think is a great little frame for that yeah yeah no i mean definitely in life that is true i mean in business sometimes it actually isn't that true in so far as the fact that if you're working with a established business if there's already some traction out there then the answer is actually probably latent in the business and the issue that the founder has is that they just haven't actually cottoned on yet to what that is so in quite a lot of projects the thrust of the project is that they'll say is, is that all you're basically saying to them is you're saying, listen, this business is much better business than you think it is. And it's got much more interesting stuff going on than what you have deliberately put into place. And if you can just get on board with this, then the thing's going to fly. And so in that scenario, it's actually not that hard a thing for the founder to, to, um, to agree with, because ultimately they want to go with the direction that's going to earn money and going to have, and going to have traction. So a lot of the time, really you are, not so much asking the founder to make a decision as you are asking them to somehow cede some of their authority to what the public, what the market wants from their business. So they aren't, so you're, you're really just, you're really just doubling down on the stuff that works. So I don't actually think that that is necessarily particularly difficult or courageous thing. I think when you're talking about earlier stage businesses, or ones who haven't sort of proven that they've really got something of high value. 